Hi, good morning and welcome back to our YouTube channel. I don't know why I always say good morning because you guys might be watching this in the middle of the night, but it is currently morning for me. It's 9am, we're still in the Canary Islands. I am currently here by myself because Camilla and I have tried to record this video like five times, that's ten, five times and it's just not happening. Sonny is currently going through his four month sleep regression, which means that he doesn't want to nap by himself, he doesn't want to play independently for more than four to five minutes and he just wants to be close, like close. I am not trying to complain or anything, I'm just explaining why I'm here by myself because Sonny is currently with Camilla because we don't really want to put him in his carrier, sit down and answer up complete Q&A with him here, like that's not fun for us, that's not fun for him and that doesn't really protect his privacy in the way that we want it to be protected so I'm gonna tell our love story from my point of view and then answer all your questions from my point of view then Camilla is going to tell the love story from her point of view and answer all the questions from her point of view and then when I edit this, <laughs> I'm going to try to merge it together. I don't know, it might not be ideal but moms make it work, right? By the way, I have a feeling that this is going to be a really long one so please pause this video right now, run and get some snacks, get a cup of tea, get whatever you need to sit through this because if you've been around for a while you know this story is complicated so I'm gonna try to keep it as short and like concentrated and to the point as possible but it's probably still gonna be a long video so buckle your seat belts and get ready as always I have my little notebook I've written everything down here so I don't forget any important details I haven't been down this memory road in quite some time I feel like it's been ages since we've told this story I'm quite excited to get going actually <laughs> Camilla and I have both been in the social media game for a while and back in 2017 we were brand ambassadors for the same brand it was an energy drink brand I'm sure you've heard of it it's called Celsius we were invited to this fitness event called shape up convention where we were having the stand giving out like tasters and, and all of that. And at this point, I had heard of Camilla, like she was pretty big in the social media game. I was just a tiny little influencer. I had like 10,000 followers at the time, but Camilla was huge. And I remember coming to this event, there was a group class going on. And this was a group class that was all about dancing. And I was like, yes, this is my scene. Was I going to be on stand? Yes. Did I end up there? No, of course I ended up in the middle of the room dancing my ass off because that was what I thought was fun. But of course when I do a dance I also want to have it on tape because well I don't hate the attention. And Camilla was literally handing me her phone and she was like please record me dancing and I was like sure. The nerve right? And she started videoing me I was following along to the group class on stage but making very big movements of course because I had the time of my life and she just went all in. I think I have this video somewhere where she was just like whacking it out. You guys know how Camilla dances. It's a lot. It's very aggressive. So it was just, it was so funny. And it was just so much fun. I talked to this girl. It was Julie, of course. And it was really nice. Went back home, looked through the video. And I could just, in the background, hear this magnificent laugh. This girl that has been there videoing me, she was laughing her heart out in this, oh my God, that girl that's dancing over there is so cool. And it just made me feel so happy. And I left there feeling so giddy and like, I really like this girl. She is funny, she is confident. I really want to be her friend. So I went online and I followed her Instagram, obviously. And we started just interacting, liking each other's pictures, commenting on each other's posts, you know the drill. And I don't, really remember how it happened but that video her doing that for me her laugh just her entire vibe you know when you meet someone that just has the vibe it made me reach out to her when my company at the time needed some help with social managing and me at the time i was a full-time student like i really needed an extra job so camilla didn't even have to tell me what the job was i was like yes give me the job it didn't take long after we started working together before we became really close friends i remember though i remember very well having this little tingling feeling in my body being like does she really like me isn't she too cool for me i mean she's very pretty she has all these friends she's always so happy and smiley she's so good at her job she's just absolutely amazing i 
don't actually believe that she wants to spend time with me. And I look back at this time with so much joy because I had I had the best time with Camilla. We did so many fun things. We went to parties together. We went to Pride 2019 together. I mean, we had the most fun. It was absolutely amazing. Like I had never had a friend like Camilla before and I didn't even consider being in love with her at the time. I was actually in a situation with another girl at this time so it was never like I'm in love with you it was very 100% I am your friend you are my very best friend and I love you as a friend we started texting more and more I think at one point I literally texted Julie more than I did any other person in my entire life I checked my phone when I woke up in the morning to see if I got a text from her the last thing I did before going to bed was see if I had a text from her. And when I, in 2019, decided that I wanted to become an influencer, because yes, I did. I had one paid collaboration. It paid me like $500 and I decided, you know what? I think this is a job for me. Camilla called me up summer 2019. She was like, Julia, I just quit my job. I am becoming a full-time influencer and you are helping me. And I was like, what? You quit your job. She was like, yes, I just let go of all my clients. I, I want to be an influencer. So Camilla basically hired me as her full-time manager and we started working together even more closely than we did before. We were together almost every day. Julie was taking all my pictures, all my videos, helping me with all my captions, reaching out to potential collaborators. Like we were working so much and we were together all the time. I think at one point we were together like what, 16 hours a day. <laughs> Now, this was all great. We were working together as an amazing team. We were having so much fun as friends. We went to New York on a business trip together. Like, it was amazing. It was not complicated. I had my situationship. Camilla was in a relationship at the time as well. It was just the best friendship I had ever been in until shit hit the fan. In September that same year, Julie was going to start school in Oslo. She didn't have a place to stay. And I said, hey, why don't you move into my place? I had this guest room. I built her a bed with my bare hands. You might say that was the start of my career as Bob the Builder. I might agree. Anyhow, I built her a bed. She moved in and all of a sudden we didn't just spend all day together at work. We were also spending the evenings watching TV. We were watching Grey's Anatomy and just had the best time. I was starting to catch feelings. Camilla didn't know. Camilla didn't even know that I was gay. It was just complicated. I was, I wasn't really sure what I was feeling. I wasn't really sure what she was feeling. It was just a complicated mess of emotions really and obviously since Camilla was in a relationship I decided to not explore my emotions any further I just tried to push them away everything I could I just pushed them away I was like no Julie you are sticking with your situationship this girl is straight she's in a relationship you are working with her she's your best friend just leave it be so that's what I tried to do Christmas came along and Julie got this offer to move into a student apartment which she took we filled up my car with all her stuff wasn't that much, but a little bit. I have a small Volvo. We were driving into Oslo, listening to music like we always did, singing along. I parked outside of her apartment, helped her carry all her stuff up. And I remember leaving there. I was just sitting in my car alone, listening to the music that we had listened to when driving into Oslo. And I was bawling my eyes out. I was like, this is so sad. We've had the best time for such a long time. I love spending time with this girl and I can't believe I have to spend my evenings alone. Like, what am I even gonna do now? Hang out with my actual boyfriend? I didn't want to move out. Camilla didn't want me to move out. We were just sobbing. Which should have been the first sign. February next year came and we all know what happened then. Covid hit, not just Norway, but the entire world. And all of a sudden, working together when not living together was actually impossible. So it just ended up with me moving back in so that we could work together. At the same time, I realized that I, for a very long time, had been in a relationship that I was not happy in. I decided that it was about time that I started thinking more about myself 
than how other people felt. To put it very shortly, I decided to get out of that relationship and focus on myself and what made me happy, and so I did. So I started searching around on the internet to find another place. I found this small apartment in Tönsberg, which is where most of my family live. And I asked Julie if maybe she wanted to move with me because why not? So we found a flat and this flat had one bedroom. Now that didn't seem to be a problem for us. We were like, sure, we will just sleep in this one bedroom. That's no issue whatsoever. Wrong, wrong, that was an issue. You see, what happened next is Camilla and I started behaving like a couple. And at this point, I think it became pretty clear to everyone around us that Julie was more than just a friend to me. And by everyone around us, I mean my mom, my grandma, my best friend. Even people I barely knew looked at us and thought to themselves, they're not just friends, are they? Except me. I was so in love with this woman. I was so in love with this woman. And I was like, what the hell am I going to do? Like, first of all, this is my best friend. I don't want to ruin this friendship. Like, she's my she's my soulmate. If that's a soulmate in a platonic way, that's fine. I don't want to lose my friend. And second of all, this is my job. I am working for this woman. Like, I don't want my life the way it is right now to change. I desperately wanted it to stay the same. And... And at the same time, I was just head over heels in love with this woman. Now, I mentioned earlier that we would go to like pubs and go out drinking and everything, and we did. And when we did, I ended up confessing my feelings and Camilla was like, no, I am straight. I am so fucking straight. You, are you for real right now? Like what we have is just fun. I was like, we are just so very good friends. <laughs> Do I like spooning her? Yeah, I do all oh, my friends, never done it before, but it's totally normal friend behavior. Of course it wasn't, but that is literally what I told myself. I can't believe how I managed to convince myself that we were just friends, but I honestly did. And obviously I was heartbroken and we went through this cycle a few times until I was like, okay, fine. I have to get over Camilla, this is not happening, I have to move on. So I downloaded Tinder, I started talking with a bunch of girls, like I was ready to move on with my life and just find a love interest somewhere else and just keep my friendship and my job and just leave it be. One day when we were going to my dad's place, um, he had this summer party. My stepmom was having her birthday at the same time. So it was like a big thing with a lot of their friends. And of course I was invited and, and Julie was also invited. Hmm. Should have got it then. We were going there and I was parking outside. Um, we were going in through the gates and Julie said, Oh, it'll be so weird when you bring your boyfriend here instead of me. And I was like, why would I ever do that? I literally thought to myself, wh why would I do that? Are, are you stupid? You are going to be my plus one forever. And at this moment, it probably started to add up in my brain that these feelings of friendship that what made me want to kiss her spend the rest of my life with her and bring her to all my family gatherings in the future maybe weren't as friendly as i first had thought and the thing is that up until this point i had only had these type of love feelings for boys i had so easily recognized them as love because when you look at a boy and you're a girl and you get like this tingly feeling in your belly you're like oh i'm in love because that's what everyone tells you that you are right they tell you oh that feeling that's love but when i got that feeling for a girl i didn't even think about that being an option and getting to that point where one plus one equals two and not just one took a long time for me and when I finally got there, I was dead scared. Now, if you're an OG, you already know about this summer party that I'm about to tell you about. I'm not gonna go into the details fully just because when we started our social media career, we were so fucking unhinged. We would just tell all our private details to the world and be like, here is my story. But now that we have a kid and everything, we want to be a bit more respectful and not share every single fucking detail of our nap life 
online. So basically what happened was Camilla had a friend with benefits at the time. Lovely, lovely guy. Absolutely love him. He is amazing. And he was throwing a summer party and Camilla was like, please come with me to this summer party. And I was like, I am not coming with you to your friends with benefits summer party like i don't want to watch that like leave me out of this and she was like please come with me and yeah i came with her we got ready and everything and all his friends were coming over and we were just sitting there and he comes over to me and he's like you know she's in love with you and i was like what no she definitely isn't like she has told me she's not in love with me and he was like i can tell just look at the way she's looking at you and i'm like no <laughs> You are the little man. I got pretty drunk and I ended up going over to Camilla and being like, you know what? I need to move out. I am so in love with you. I cannot do this anymore. I have to move out so I can get over you. And I don't want to lose our friendship. I don't want to lose our business. I love you. I want to make our friendship work. But to do that, I have to distance myself for a while. And all of a sudden I was confronted with everything I thought I felt and everything I knew I felt but didn't want to know what I felt and I asked her to be my girlfriend because in that moment it just felt like that was the right thing to do not because I had to but because I just you know when you have this feeling in your belly that you're missing out on something if you don't jump like that I don't know what this is I I I, I don't know what I'm getting myself into but I know that not doing it is wrong I, I know that the only possible thing to do right now the only right thing to do right now is to jump and I may not have all the information I may not have all the answers but if I don't I will regret it for the rest of my life so I jumped and I I said to her I think I might be feeling the same way I didn't say I love you too I was like I think I might be feeling the same way too I don't know what to do with all of this but if you are willing to try I would love for you to be my girlfriend and lucky for me she said yes I was literally in shock when I'm telling you I was in shock I'm not exaggerating I was shocked and really drunk and out of it and I was like okay and then we were girlfriends and it was the weirdest thing like we had not been on a single date we had not done anything we had been best friends for years it was a really strange period of time but we did end up being girlfriends and it was absolutely amazing and it was a dream come true and i was like shit 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 but looking back it was so messy and we should not have done it that way i can't believe that we started with that and ended up here but we did the next day i just decided to text everyone in my family and tell me hey i have a girlfriend her name is julia you've met her already i hope you're gonna include her in the family as best you can and everyone answered well that was about damn time and i was like what do you mean they were like we've seen this coming forever we've been talking about this kamala a lot now everything that happened after that is kind of going to be explained in all your questions so i'm just going to move on to the questions now and then we'll see where it goes but hopefully your question is going to be answered i'm not done talking about our relationship story don't worry but let's move on to the q a of things so question number one how did you know you were gay i think for me to be completely honest it was more about knowing understanding believing that i wasn't straight more than knowing that i was gay my entire life i had been in relationship with men so when i started to want to do the things that i had up until now done with men with julie with a woman i i didn't quite understand what was happening it was like one part of me wanted to do all of these things one part of me wanted to see her naked and kiss her and the other part of me was trying to tell me this is not what you're supposed to want and it wasn't until i went to my dad's summer party that i had this thought that i might want to spend the rest of my life with a woman i just went into this bubble where i was thinking day and night about what this was because i had never experienced anything like that and I didn't know if I could trust my own feelings or not because they were so new and at the end of the day I think I just ended up trying to be open and just decide that my feelings may not need a label because I didn't understand if this meant that I was a lesbian and maybe I had lied to myself my 
a whole life or if it meant that I just liked Julie and, and I hadn't lied to myself for my whole life or maybe I'd be telling myself like half lies or maybe I had missed out on life or I didn't understand what all these feelings meant for the life that I had had already lived and at one point I just had to try and tell myself that these feelings are here and now and it's okay to act on them without making them define the life you've already lived and I still don't know how gay I am if I'm a lesbian or if I'm bi or if I'm pan or if... I don't know where on the specter I am I just know that the feelings I have for Julie makes me want to spend the rest of my life with her build a family with her kiss her hold her hand lay close to her when I'm having a bad day and when I'm having a good day and it's just this feeling of wanting to give one person everything and have them be a part of your everything. And since she's a woman, that makes me gay. I remember so vividly being like 12 or 13 years old, laying in my bed like, what if I'm a lesbian? Because all my friends, they were like talking about boys, talking about their feelings. And I was just there like, I had no interest. Boys didn't interest me whatsoever. I did not find them attractive. I did not want to flirt with them. They did not give me butterflies. I did not want to be in a relationship with them. I was like, what if I'm a lesbian? And then I was like, nah, of course I'm not. Definitely not a lesbian. And then I moved on with my life and I ended up having two serious relationships with men. And don't get me wrong, these men, well, at least the first man, the first man, he was absolutely amazing. He treated me like a princess. He was everything I could have ever wished for in a partner except he had a penis. So it just it didn't work. I don't think I fully knew I was gay or I did but I don't think I fully accepted it to myself until I blew this relationship with the second boyfriend. I actually ended up reading online a lot. I looked through a lot of coming out stories. I googled how do I know if I'm gay quiz. <laughs> a lot and I just really had to reflect upon who I was and what I was feeling and I don't think I fully realized how gay I was until I met Camilla. Meeting Camilla it felt like feeling all those feelings that all my friends around me had explained that they were feeling about boys. Did that make sense? Like all of a sudden I could relate to everyone's relationship stories, to everyone's stories about having butterflies, all of that stuff I could all of a sudden relate to, but I was feeling it for a girl and they were feeling it for boys. And I had always thought that that being in love was was just something that was hyped up, that having sex was something that was just a bit like, I don't really get the hype. And then I met Camilla and I got the hype. I guess I don't have anything to compare it with, but to be completely honest with you guys, I think that I could have figured out that I was gay sooner if I had lived in a time where representation were a bit more prominent because I wanted to kiss the girls when I went out when I was 16, 17, 18. I loved watching boobs. Like, I have always had this affection towards the feminine physic, towards everything that is feminine, but I thought that was normal. <laughs> I thought that didn't make me into something special, I thought that was just the way things were, and because that was just the way things were, I was probably straight. And I wasn't really open to the idea of being anything else but straight until I met Julie. And to be honest, I wasn't really open to the idea then either. The thing with finding out you're gay later in life, I think, at least it was for me, is that it, it made me question everything I had done up until then. It made me question all my relationship, it made me question all my feelings, it led me into this spiral of not knowing if my past feelings were real or if they were made up or if I had just been in relationship with men because I thought I had to or if I was actually in love with men or if I was really gay now or if I was just trying to fool myself. So I think all my past experiences made that coming to terms with being gay i don't know if i can say a little bit harder because i don't know what it's like coming to terms with being gay when you're 16 or 14 or 20 or 12. i i have no idea i just know that i found it hard because i already had this idea of who i was i already had this set um mold that i had made for myself that i fit into and 
all of a sudden I was not just like stepping out of it I was absolutely crushing it and telling myself this is not true I had to get to know myself all over again and I started I questioned everything I still question stuff but if anything it was also an opportunity for me to get to know myself again and to reinvent myself and to spend some time figuring out who I actually am instead of who I might have thought I had to be, if that makes sense. The next question is actually, did you struggle with compulsory heterosexuality? And yes, I did. I have never met a single gay person who never struggled with this. This was a huge struggle for me. We grew up in a society that, that just focused on heterosexual relationships. Like when I was growing up, there were no lesbians. They were nowhere to be found. I didn't have any representation. So obviously when I felt attracted to girls, I was like, something is wrong with me. I am supposed to want my fairy tale with my prince that's gonna come save me on his white horse. You know the drill, right? That's why I ended up in straight relationships. Time and time again, I ended up sleeping with men time and time again, even though I didn't want to because I thought that was what I was supposed to do. I was supposed to be in love with men. My parents never told me that it was okay to be gay. Our society is so heteronormative and still is. Even though it was worse back then, it still is now. And I feel like that's why every time I want to quit social media, that's what I think about. Our society is so heteronormative. I need to be representation for my inner child, for for little Julie who really needed that representation. I know that there's a little girl somewhere who needs to see that you can be gay and have a family. You can be gay and have kids. You can be gay and live a really happy life. It's possible. To be completely honest with you, I feel really sorry for Julie for having to be in a relationship with me for the first six months after we decided to become girlfriends because I did not know what was going on. I remember this one time we were lying in bed watching The Notebook and there's this scene in the video where the guy lifts that girl up, carries her like around his waist up the stairs and tosses her on the bed. And I started crying so bad and Julie was like, what is it? And I said, you're never gonna be able to do that with me. You're never gonna carry me up the stairs. I'm never gonna be thrown against a wall. I'm never gonna be, you, can, you can't do those things. Um, and it wasn't as much that I want a man to carry me up the stairs. It was more that I don't know if I can be feminine in this relationship. I had this idea in my head that being gay looked a certain way, that I had to act a certain way. I just had a really hard time learning and understanding that I could be who I was, no matter who I was in a relationship with. How did you accept your sexuality? I'm having trouble finding the right label. I still don't know what I am. And I find putting a label on myself to be very, very hard because I don't know if I'm a lesbian. I don't know if I'm bisexual. I don't know if I'm pansexual. Is that what it's called? Yeah. I don't know where I am on the spectre. All I know for now is that I'm in love with Julie. I want to spend the rest of my life with her and that's all that matters. For me, finding that label hasn't been as important. I really did want to find that label in the beginning and it just resulted in me questioning everything in my life from my past experiences to what I was really feeling right now to if I was even allowed to look at a man and think, hey, he's attractive or if that was just wrong because I was gay and, and what did it mean and I it caused so much fog in my brain that I decided that I am who I am and I don't need a label for it. I'm struggling to find the words to explain this but I believe that sexuality is a spectrum and that it's fluid and that basically what I'm trying to say is fuck the labels. Fuck the labels. You don't need a label to know that you are queer. You can just be gay. You can just take this umbrella called gay and put it on you and be like, I'm gay. And if people ask you, oh, are you pansexual? Are you bisexual? Are you lesbian? If you know, and if you want to identify with the label, and if that feels safe for you, then great, go ahead and do that. But if you don't know, you don't have to. I came out as bisexual first. Turns out I wasn't, but that's okay too. I'm not trying to dismiss anyone that are like, I really want a label because it makes me feel safe because I do that. I really wanted my label and I'm a lesbian and I have figured that out, but it took me years. It took me such a long time to get to this point and just labels, they aren't necessary if you don't want them. So if you want a label, you will find your label. Your label might change over time, that's okay. That doesn't matter. But if you don't want it, that's fine.
Did you ever feel ashamed to be together in public and does it get easier? I have actually never felt this, but I know Camilla did. So I'm just gonna let Camilla answer this question because we have spoken so much about it and I know she has some great points. So I'm just gonna let my wife deal with this one. I never felt ashamed in the sense of, oh, I don't want anyone to know I'm gay, but I did feel ashamed in the way of, I don't want people and especially men to look at me holding my girlfriend's hand or kissing my girlfriend and think about what we look like when we're naked doing the deed because especially in the beginning i felt that anyone who saw us being intimate automatically thought of us like porn i don't know if that even makes sense to you guys but lesbians have been sexualized so much and it's often seen as the biggest wet dream for all men and in the beginning i just felt that everyone looking at us even if it were girls or boys were either thinking oh i wish i could see more or i hope my boyfriend doesn't see this and it just made it hard for me to actually enjoy the moment because i was so busy thinking about what everyone else might be thinking i didn't do anything specific to get over that actually other than just telling myself that it's not my business what they're thinking and doing it again and again and again and again and after a while it just became as normal as anything else i kiss julie outside now and i don't really think about <laughs> what it looks like i hold her hand and i don't really think about what people think maybe if we are somewhere where i know that gay rights aren't top notch i might feel a little bit unsafe but in no way ashamed so it definitely gets better and the thing that really really helped me was just doing it again and again and again and again top three things about being in a relationship with a girl you can borrow makeup from one another which is great because when i met julie i did not know how to do my makeup and i did not have any makeup so going into a relationship with julie i can tell you it has <coughs> upped my makeup routine, my skincare routine, my hair routine, my routine in general. All of a sudden, I know what a concealer is. I know how to contour. I know how to use foundation without getting this on my chin. It is just aced on the makeup. Number one thing is Camilla understands my menstrual cycles. I absolutely love that. She understands PMS, she understands hormones, she understands all that jazz. So whenever I'm PMSing, she knows what I'm going through, which is amazing. When she says, oh, I understand how you're feeling, she actually means it because she also has PMS. She also has her period. She also has her mood going up and down like a fucking dumper. She knows what it's like to feel what I feel. Putting ourselves in the other one's shoes is just easier because we go through life experiencing the world in a much more similar way than I would with a man. Second best thing is boobies. I love boobies. Last but not least, we can share a closet. Okay, Julie might be a couple of sizes smaller than me, but she loves having like big hoodies and dresses that aren't tight and I can use all of them and I love it and I wouldn't change it for the world. I was gonna say that we like the same things and that we, we have the same morals and values and everything, but you can find that in a straight relationship. Like, that's just about the person, not about the gender. I'm just sticking to the PMS and the boobies. <laughs> oh, I'm sweating. Right, how did you overcome the fear of telling your best friend you were in love with her? I wish I could be like, I talked to my therapist about it and we made this plan and I built up the courage and I went and I talked to her about it when the truth is that I just got shit drunk. I didn't build up the courage, alcohol did and I don't recommend. I don't recommend doing that. I much rather recommend like sitting down with your friend, being like, this is how I feel, this is the way it is, you know? Instead of just getting pissed drunk and then word vomiting it out. But that's how I built up the courage and saying anything else would be lying. Don't feel like the answer to this question was very inspirational. Lucky for me, Julie got over that fear first because to be completely honest, I don't know if I ever would have if she hadn't told me that she was in love with me first because that would have been jumping too high for me. I don't know what would have happened like six months after or maybe I would have found the courage to do it at one point but where we were at that time i did not have it in me to tell her that i had these feelings for her mostly because i could barely admit having those feelings to myself my first impression of julie were that she was such a fun and 
smiley and outgoing girl with the best laugh in the entire world. She was just so open and so very cool. I always thought that Julie was so much cooler than me. She is. She's a lot more cooler than I am. And she just has a way with people. She looks fire. Her laugh is contagious. My first impression of her was just that, oh my God, she's so cool, so fun, so smart. And her laugh is just great. And whoop, she will probably never like me. Camilla was very loud. She was a lot. She just came across as the most confident, like outgoing person. I don't know if that even makes sense. You know, like when you see someone and they just ooze of confidence. She was just so confident. Like she just seemed so secure in who she was and outgoing and joyful. And like, you know, those people that are just sunshine. That was my first impression of Camilla. How do you handle arguments in your relationship? I briefly mentioned earlier that in the beginning of our relationship, we shouldn't have just jumped into being girlfriends. We should have like dated. We should have taken it a bit slower, but we didn't. And it did end up in a lot of arguments. I think the first six months of our relationship, we argued every week. It was weekly arguments that were just based in insecurities. Like we were projecting our insecurities over on the other and it led us to argue a lot. I was terrified that Camilla wasn't really into me, that she was just scared of losing me as a friend. I was terrified that she wasn't really gay because she had said that she was straight so many times. Camilla had so much internalized homophobia to deal with and so so much compared to deal with and finding out you're gay late in life it's just it comes with a whole other set of insecurities like almost like an identity crisis that she was projecting over on me and I generally didn't think we were gonna make it I don't think Camilla thought we were gonna make it either I think we both felt that we were just ruining the friendship ruining the relationship ruining our business ruining everything um, so what we did was we went to therapy and we went to couples therapy and we learned how to communicate and how to communicate our feelings. And communication is just key to everything. We hardly ever argue anymore now because of that. And listen, I'm not saying we never hurt each other's feelings. We do, we do all the time, but we have learned to communicate them. And honestly, Camilla and I have very different communication styles. Like Camilla wants to sort things right away. She's very proactive. She's very like, okay, something happened. I want to sort it. I want to fix it. Can we talk about it right now? Julie and I have two very different ways of resolving an argument. Me on my side, I am very hands-on. I'm very direct. I want all cards on the table, all the facts up in the air, everything fixed within seconds. If I have to leave an argument, take some time to myself and think, which is often a very good idea, I get very anxious and I have a tendency to think that everything is going to go to hell. So whenever we have an argument, I want to push just to get it out of the way at once. I I don't want to listen if Julie says that she needs some time. I don't want to hear. I, I just want to push through, get it over with. So I can put this feeling of something unresolved is going on in my life aside. Julie, on the other hand, is very good <laughs> at taking time to herself and thinking through the matters before actually talking about them. Like we can have an argument there and then going on about something and she's like, I need some time to think about this and we can revisit the conversation, which is probably great, but it's not my cup of tea. I need 20 minutes to just think through what happened, analyze my own actions, my own feelings. I need to figure out what I'm feeling and why I'm feeling it before I can talk about it with you. Right? So I've been working so hard on stepping back, taking that time to myself too, and reminding myself that this does not mean that our relationship is ending. I don't know where I got this feeling from that I have to resolve everything the second it happens because if I don't, everything will go to hell, but that is the feeling I have. And I constantly have to work on telling myself that that feeling is not the truth. It has taken some time to get here. We have had a few conversations about how we handle arguments because being so different, we have to understand where the other one is coming from to really understand why things end up being like they are. And I think talking through those things is super important because it turns out we can actually argue in a very sophisticated manner as long as everyone is being met on what they need. So I need that confirmation from Julie saying, this doesn't mean I'm breaking up with you. 
just take it easy. No divorces on the table here. And she needs me to go, yeah, you can have your space. That's okay. We have just found a way of communication that works for us and we have done it by going to therapy. And I think couples therapy is the most amazing thing. And if anything ever happens to us, I really hope we go back to couples therapy because it helped us so fucking much. If you're experiencing some communication problems with your partner, therapy is the solution. Go to couples therapy. What is your favorite silly little quirk about each other? My absolute favorite silly little quirk about Julie is that she is so clumsy. She is, she's so clumsy. I don't think you understand like, she knocks things over and she drops things on the floor and she, she just <laughs> she's this walking little clumsy clump of things and i absolutely love it it is just the cutest thing and mostly because always when when she does it when she knocks something over or when she drops something on the floor she goes and i i just have to laugh because she's so darn cute i believe my favorite quirk about camilla is that she just dances everywhere there is this one move i used to be a dancer and camilla wanted to learn a dance move like back in the day like a really simple one so i taught her a ripple and camilla will now still five years later do ripples everywhere this can be in the middle of the shop in the middle of the street while she's parking <laughs> just my favorite thing because it's so Camilla her little dance moves they're magnificent I absolutely love them of course we can the proposal is actually so cute and I can't believe that Julie spent so much time planning and working on it like if it was me it would have happened on a whim because I'm not a planner of that extent she's just absolutely amazing at that one day one day I'm going to propose all over again so that we can renew our vows and everything because my proposal, it was nice and it was lovely and all of that, but I didn't know Camilla well enough to know what she really would have wanted, I think. But basically what I did is that I ordered a shit ton of Polaroid pictures of Camilla and I in our entire relationship, like from when we met to when we became best friends to when we moved in together, all that stuff. And I ordered, I think there was... 20 25 polaroids and when i got them i wrote a song on the back of the polaroid um and it was just a song that reminded me of my feelings for camilla or a song that was like our song that reminded me of a moment that we had together or this one song that they played all summer 2019 and then i turned the polaroid and i wrote like a little thing about how I felt that day and how I felt in that moment with Camilla and uh, I put the Polaroids into little envelopes and I put dates on them. It all started in I think October of 2020 when Julie said that she had made me a Christmas calendar but it was so long that I might have to end up starting to get it already done and I was like this is weird, okay? Of course I can get like a Christmas calendar. Uh, she was like, I've made you these letters and you're gonna get one every week. And I was like, oh my God, that is so nice. And I opened the first one. There was a picture of us on, on like this uh, Polaroid. And on the back, there was the name of a song that would describe the feeling that she had for me, that I had for her even at the given moment. I got these letters every week but all of a sudden she said oh you might have to <clears throat> get these letters more often and i was like oh wow how many do you have it was beginning of november and all of a sudden i started getting them every other day and i was like oh my god i filled up this whole wall with all the pictures of us it was so nice at one point i was like is this really a christmas calendar or is this leading up to something else but she was like on uh, christmas eve you're gonna get like a big present a big a gift that is going to be the end of the Christmas calendar and I hope that you're excited. I'm so excited da, 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 da. I was like, yay! But then on the 15th of November, she said, you're gonna get your gift today. I was like, I'm gonna get my gift today. Funny thing about Julie, she is not a very patient person. I should have said this on what is the silliest little quirk you love about Julie. She's so impatient. If she has a gift for me, she will give me the gift that very instant. She will never wait. I get my Christmas gifts from the beginning of December until Christmas Eve. Several of them. Because she gives them all away when she gets them. After she had opened all the Polaroids, on the last one it said, ask for your puzzle. And I had ordered this puzzle that was like put together almost like a collage. Like 
lots of lots of lots of pictures of Camilla and I and in the middle it said will you be my wifey and I see that it's like pictures of us because I can see my nose and I can see like my eye and I see that there's some text there and I start puzzling and I think she understood it quite quickly she was like what is this I can see the words will you and my head is going oh my god she is proposing isn't she and then she puzzled it it was just at home. We were just at home. Camilla and I are homebodies. We don't really like dressing up and going out and and making stuff fancy. You know what I mean? Like we like staying in, ordering in, playing board games, watching movies. Like that's who we are. And so I didn't want to do an extravagant proposal because I just wanted it to be true to who we were and our relationship and reflect us as a couple. But then now that I know how much Camilla fucking loves being the center of attention and how much she loves extravagant shit, when I propose to her about like renewing our vows and everything, it's gonna be extravagant. <laughs> I am continuing the puzzle, laying down piece by piece. Will you be like, will you be what? And then we got to W and we got the I and the F. Turns out it was, will you be my wifey? And she was just ecstatic. She was over the moon and she was like, yes, yes, of course I will. I looked over at her and she was like, will you? And I was like, yes. <laughs> I remember crawling over, kissing her. Of course I wanted to marry her. I gave her the ring that I had picked out for her and it was... It was such a light in a really, really messy time. And that's gonna sound strange, but I feel like us getting engaged, it was it was like promising each other that we were gonna work through our issues. And that's probably not the way you should do things. And I'm not recommending this. And I know our story is messy. I, I know it's messy. Our story is really messy. But that moment was just like so reassuring to the both of us. So after after we got engaged, was really when things started turning around because it was almost like we had made a promise to each other to figure shit out. What was the moment you realized you found your forever girl? I feel like this question has maybe 100 answers because there are moments every single week where I just think, oh, this is my forever girl. The first one I had at my dad's summer party when I realized that this is the girl I want to take home to my family forever. The second one was during the summer when I was so caught up in trying to figure out who I was and what all this being in a relationship with a girl, what it meant. And Julie throughout the whole thing just literally held my hand and went, you're going to be okay and you're going to figure it out. And I can't even imagine the energy and pain she went through watching the girl she loved being scared to love her back, but she did. Obviously when she asked me to marry her and then later on when we moved in to our first house with our two dogs and we just, I don't know, found ourselves in some way. I realized that she was my forever girl again when we got Sunny and I just... I don't think I've ever been in love with a person as much as I was after that. Watching her be a mom and watching her taking care of our family and I, ugh, my heart explodes just thinking about that. I think I just have moments where I realize that she's my forever girl every day, <laughs> to be honest, because I just never stopped believing it. So. I guess I must be it. There are so many moments where I just knew Camilla was the woman of my dreams. But I think I have to say, seeing Camilla on our wedding day, standing up there as I was walking down the aisle, just seeing her, it just... I'm not gonna cry. I'm not gonna cry, I'm not gonna cry, I'm not gonna cry. That moment was insane. It was just this moment where I was like, it's just you and me. It's you and me forever and everything else is gonna be okay. Everything else is gonna sort itself out. No matter what it is, no matter what happens, it's just you and me. Team, you know, and seeing her up there and saying I do and I was just in awe of this woman. The most beautiful, beautiful, amazing, smart, clever, funny woman ever. I just knew then that it's forever. 
and every day I still know and there have been so many moments like that since like when I gave birth like my entire labor it was just I knew I picked the right person and every day I know I picked the right person okay I'm praying I managed to edit this in a way that made it all make sense so i hope you love this q a slash story time if you came this far i want to say thank you for watching our youtube and i hope that at least you got a little bit of an impression of how our relationship has come to where it is today and a little insight into the messy story that has led up to this fantastic thing that we have right now. If you have any questions or if anything didn't make sense, feel free to ask in the comment section down below and I will try my best to answer. If you liked the video, I hope that you subscribe to our channel and leave a comment underneath telling us what you would like to see next because we love having you guys on our creative team if you are currently struggling with your sexuality know that you aren't alone whatever you feel is so 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 valid and we are here for you you will be okay in the end you will be okay thank you so much for watching and can't wait to see you again bye bye